Well, the Justice Department wants to hear from former Vice President Mike Pence. This is according to people familiar with the matter. Prosecutors there have reached out to Pence's reps, hoping to get his testimony in their criminal probe of former President Trump's efforts to stay in power after the 2020 election. Pence's team has indicated that he is open to talking about that, possibly agreeing to testimony. Let's bring in senior political correspondent for The New York Times, Maggie Haberman. She, of course, one of the reporters who broke this story. Maggie, um, good to see you. Pence has always called the January 6th committee, um, you know, partisan, even though there are those two Republicans on it. Um, and he does seem at least saying open to talking to DOJ. Do you think he will? Poppy, I think that the, he's more receptive to this outreach from the DOJ, according to the people we've spoken to, uh, because he recognizes there's a difference between a criminal investigation led by the Justice Department um, and this House Select Committee, which, among other things, is a different branch of government. Whether there will be something that happens remains to be seen. We're a long ways from that, remember, because we don't know whether, if there is an agreement to testify, uh, former President Trump would try to assert executive privilege. This would be an extraordinary turn in this investigation mm. if the DOJ does get Mike Pence to cooperate as a witness. Uh, Maggie, what does all of this do? Look, I know this is a big question. Good morning to you, by the way. Happy Thanksgiving. So what does all of this Happy do Thanksgiving. for, you know, he announced, was it last week? He did not announce he's running for president yet. Is that what you're going to no, say? No, no, I meant, I'm, I'm talking about the former president. Oh, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. he did. So the former president, it was last week, it all runs together, especially when it comes to, you know, who's announcing and who's not. <laughs> what is all of, all of these investigations, mm -hmm. Mike Pence, you know, possibly testifying, yada, yada, yada. What does all this do for Trump? Does it matter? I think it depends, Don, on if he testifies what Mike Pence would say. But Mike Pence is obviously a key witness who is one of the only people who can speak to certain events in the lead up to January 6, 2021, and what was taking place that day. You raise an important point, which is that this would create such an unprecedented situation. A, a former vice president and potential candidate potentially testifying or being interviewed against a former president who is a candidate, all of this being investigated by a Justice Department in an administration with a sitting president who is likely to run again. So mm -hmm. we are just in uncharted territory. Yeah. Can we talk oh, about I mean, Alaska? Yeah. Should we talk about Alaska? I mean, and Sarah Palin? I mean, what happened to once the darling, at one point, uh, of the Republican Party? She's lost twice. Yeah, she lost twice this year. She has struggled. Alaska is a strange state because you can get crossover votes uh, with Democrats and independents. So it's it's an unusual situation. And certainly in the case of the Murkowski race uh, as well, you had ranked choice voting. Uh, but look, I think that Sarah Palin had a, a moment in time. I think that she, she helped usher in this new era in the Republican Party. We saw that Donald Trump inherited some of what she brought in. But I do think that, you know, at a certain point, you actually have to win elections. And to keep saying, you know, you're going to win and you're strong and your brand of politics is strong and to not win is going to raise a lot of questions. Those are the same questions that the former president's going to face. Well, it's interesting. Murkowski won, speaking, sticking with Alaska for a moment. And this is someone who Trump vehemently campaigned against, right, propping up an opponent. Of course, she, you know, voted to convict him during the, the impeachment trial, the second impeachment trial. Um, and voted against, you know, a number of key things in, in his presidency. But what I thought was interesting about Murkowski winning is sort of this, this coalition that she built um, across the aisle in Alaska. I think that Murkowski is a well-liked politician, generally speaking, in that state. I think that she is seen as delivering for that state. And I think that in, in D.C. in particular, Poppy, we, we tend to, you know, even though we're not, in, we're not in D.C., but we cover D.C. And I think that folks who are in D.C. and around it tend to, for, you know, be more removed. I was having a conversation with a colleague about this yesterday. Tend to be more removed from the delivery of services of government. She's seen as being effective at that, generally speaking. And, and that is what lets you win. In Senate races, often, it's what lets you win in governor's races. It is how you behave in connection with the services people want. And so I think it is, I think that brand is based on something substantive. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what, the, again, I keep going to what, what this portends for the future, right? Because we have the, the midterms behind us, and you have someone um, like Senator Mur Murkowski, who is, I guess you could say she is uh, moderate. And if, I wonder if the Republican Party is actually listening to the voters. Because you have Kevin McCarthy out there saying, we're going to do these investigations. you got Hunter Biden. You have all of these things. Um, look, not to say that investigations shouldn't happen, but are they 
in tune with where the American people stand right now and what they're interested in, what's important to them? I think that Kevin McCarthy is going to get squeezed on to engage in a lot of these investigations, whether he wants to or not. And I think that, you know, whether whether that is where the, the public is, I think, is an open question. I think that we have certainly seen in previous, uh, you know, years and in previous Congresses when Congress is, is perceived as overreaching on certain investigations and whether they get too personal. Uh, I do think that there is an appetite among a, no a pretty wide cross-section of Republicans in the House for uh, activities and investigations related to Biden. I I'm not sure how wide the appetite is for investigations related to investigating the work that's been done already by the House Select Committee on January 6th. And that's another question that McCarthy is getting pressured on by some corners uh, of, of the House Republican uh, group. And so, you know, I, I think it's a huge open question. But the because Republicans did not get this overwhelming win in the midterms, I do think that they are going to face questions about what kind of mandate they are taking the gavel with. Yeah. Important question, Maggie, this behind the scenes here. Either you're like an all in Thanksgiving everything, or you're just like, you know, I'm going to go to the Chinese restaurant. So where do you stand on this? <laughs> I, I am cooking a lot. <laughs> there it is. She, she does it all. Uh, she was, does it all. This was an unexpected, unexpected situation, but I'm cooking everything. Okay. We, wow. Okay, so bring us some samples tomorrow. We would like some leftovers. <laughs> and we will return your Tupperware. Maggie, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us on this day. Appreciate it. We're grateful for you. Happy Thanksgiving, Thank guys. you, Maggie. Thank you, Thank you very much.